So, hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Sunday Speaks. I, as always, am Cheyenne Severin, and today I'm here with... Michelle Finnegan. So, Michelle, um, since the holidays are coming up, which some people in recovery, I just learned, call, like, hurricane season because of how, like, busy and chaotic and, like, stressful it can be, you know, along with everything that's fun, especially when you're in, like, early recovery and you're adjusting to, like, a bunch of new things in your life, um, we just wanted to take a minute to examine, like, how to deal with grief or loss or just, like, the stress of the holidays, but... Before we really get into detail about that, do you want to just start with explaining, um, in your view, like what grief is? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, I think traditionally, you know, we think about grief as just the loss of a loved one. If we, you know, somebody who's passed away and there's really a lot more to grief than just that. And, and it could be you know, grief of someone who's recently passed, but it could also, you know, memories of somebody could come up. Um, people may not have dealt with grief at all. So it could be delayed, you know, if they're busy working, um, you know, they call it like delayed or masked grief when they haven't dealt with it, but maybe the holidays will um, bring that up for them. But it can also be, and these are some things that people, are like not allowed to grieve for, which might be the loss of a pet or maybe a miscarriage or a divorce. Um, and sometimes there's something that's called disenfranchised grief where, you know, people, if there's death by suicide or death by overdose, people feel like they're not allowed to grieve because maybe the person caused that themselves. But those are huge, um, areas for grieving. Also, there's a couple of um, things that people don't think about sometimes like kids, you know, if their parents are divorced, like they have a whole um, set of grief feelings and things that they go through at the holidays because their holidays are now different. Um, and I was doing a session with another lady uh, the other day and she's grieving the loss of her own life, you know, because of her own illness. And then there's recovery, people having the first, you know, holiday without, you know, their, what they usually use. And so they're going through a grieving process and family. So it's just grief is so large and it encapsulates so many areas of our lives that I don't think we usually allow ourselves um, the time to, you know, feel that and really recognize what it looks like. Mm hmm so I actually had never heard before, like, that you can't, you know, quote unquote, like, grieve the loss of a miscarriage. Is that something you see often? Um, yes. I mean, that is something that we see. And I don't know if often is the right word, because I think people feel that, you know, that doesn't count, or they just kind of say, oh, you can have another one, or you can, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> something. But it's, it's really a it, it does count and it is, you know, a process for people who, especially depending on what term they lost their child in, you know, but there's definitely a lot of grief around that for the mother and the father. Yeah. Of the town. Yeah. Okay. Um, so moving on, um, from that, how, how can people mm -hmm. grieving cope and with the holiday season traditions and festivities, like how do you adjust to that? Well, first of all, first and foremost, it's, it's accepting that, you know, there is grief, you know, and accepting the limitations that people have, um, allowing yourself and honoring yourself for all these different things that we just talked about, places that you might be or your family members. So, you know, when I say accepting the limitations, like some people may not feel that they are ready to step into family celebrations or Christmas parties or something like that. And so allowing yourself to say, no, I don't, I can't, I, I don't want to, I can't do it. You know, you don't have to push yourself to do anything. Um, and, you know, uh, the children, siblings, you know, they might, it might be a struggle for them too, you know, so really talking about what is happening is really good. Um, respecting 
different people's wishes because some people will feel like they just want to do all the celebrations and keep things just as the same traditions that we've always had. Other people won't want to do anything, you know, and if you don't want to put up a tree, don't put up a tree. If you don't want to listen to Christmas music, don't listen to Christmas music if it causes too much. Um, but allowing yourself to have time and space to grieve and to think about what's important to you is helpful. Um, maybe planning ahead. If you are going to go to a Christmas party, like this is how long I can stay there or, or not, you know, and allowing your traditions to change, I think is pretty helpful too. They don't have to look the same as they always have and that's okay. But really essentially giving yourself permission to do something different. Do you think it's like a goal (laughs) to eventually return to how things have been or is it more just like living in that new normal like kind of alteration or is it just like dependent on the person yeah I think it's really not expecting yourself to have that answer you know Mm -hmm. because people may want to return to their old traditions but they may not ever be able to because Mm -hmm. life is different now you know and so just accepting that things are different and things may change. You may want to go back to it or maybe you can't for a couple of years and then maybe you can't and maybe it changes slightly. Maybe you do something completely different, but Mm -hmm. allowing yourself that there doesn't have to be a right or wrong. You know, we don't have to have the pressure of what always has been Mm -hmm. because that's a hard one for people is, you know, dealing with and what do we do with the traditions? Yeah. So, Michelle, how would you guide someone who's feeling a lot of pain and anguish at this time of year? Um, I think, you know, a lot of the, so a lot of things that we just talked about, you know, just really allowing time for self, allowing things to be different. I would say, you know, reach out, you know, some people really want to reach out and some people don't want to reach out to other people. They want that time to themselves. So really honoring where they're at, I think is really um, probably the most important for, you know, to, for people to get through the grief at this time. Um, I think if we are, I, I don't know if this is moving into the question, you know, that we had discussed earlier, but we were kind of talking about um, what to do if, you know, people want to look for signs from their loved ones. Is that kind of where you're leading into this or was that a different question? Um, that was something I was going to ask you a little bit later, but we can get okay. into that if you want. <laughs> yeah. So I would say as long as just guiding um somebody through it. It's it's kind of what we just talked about already, really just honoring the person, you know, the self, where they're at, what they need, and to not be afraid to speak their needs, really not be afraid afraid to tell people that this is what I need and this is what I'm going to do and take the pressure off themselves, I think is probably the most important. Do you have any advice for friends and family of people who are going through grief like if you know somebody that you love is coming to like an event or like a holiday party and you know they're going through something like how do you have any advice for those people I think um most importantly is for them to you know not shy away from the subject so a lot of times people get afraid they don't know what to say and they don't know how to talk about, you know, if somebody has lost a loved one or a divorce or anything, you know, they just don't know what to say. So they don't say anything. So first and foremost, I would suggest to, you know, talk about it and ask that person that they want to support, you know, what is it that you need? Ask them their needs and then um, support their decision. We don't say, oh, you know, you should actually go to the party or you should be doing this or you should be doing that. Like, Instead of telling them the shoulds, you know, find out what is important to them and support that without um, telling them what to do. Also, I would say to not try to fix them. You know, people have a tendency to want to make everything better or make them feel better. And 
you know, just honoring. It's very difficult to sit with somebody when they're in a lot of pain sometimes and not try to fix them. But just being there with them is probably one of the most supportive things people can do. Um, and I would also say to, to be really careful with their words. You know, people sometimes... You know, as an example before, when I was talking about the miscarriage, people might say, oh, but you can have another one, you know, and that really takes away from the person that's not supporting where they're at, you know, and it's it's kind of placating their grief or, t- or telling them that it's not okay, you know, so really being careful of, um, you know, or sometimes people will say, oh, they're in a better place if, if they passed away, which... They probably are, but that might not be what they need to hear, you know. So mm-hmm. just being very careful, gentleness, sensitivity, really being there with an open heart is probably the best thing. Mm-hmm. So as a psychic medium, what would you tell someone who's looking for signs or like messages from their loved ones? Uh, there's that question. Yeah. <laughs> um First, I I would tell them to, you know, trust that your loved one is with you, to trust that, you know, if they're looking for signs to say that they're, you know, here, yes, they'll bring them signs, but also just knowing that they are there because our loved ones are just a thought away. And when we think about them, we bring them alive and with us in our heart. Mm -hmm. Um, I would also say maybe rather than looking for signs to, you know, see if they're there, you know, bring their presence around them by doing things um, like maybe cooking their favorite meal or, you know, buying a gift for them and donating it to their favorite charity, Um, lighting a candle, maybe just going out and taking a walk and inviting their loved one with them and having a conversation, you know, like they're, they're with them and that they're there. So, I think that really brings them into our heart, brings them into our mind and honors, you know, your own self at the same time, you know, and, and just knowing and trusting that they're with, they're with them through it all is, is important. Mm -hmm. So even without dealing with like some kind of grief or like a loss, um, the holidays can be a stressful time. Do you find that the holidays get stressful for you? And like, if so, how do you deal with that? You know, the holidays have been more stressful. You know, the way that I deal with them um, now versus before I've really dialed into what my beliefs are around the holidays, what my traditions are. And I'm not just living the traditions of my parents and what they did and what their parents did and what their parents did, but really honoring what's important to me and what I believe in. Mm -hmm. And so that has, you know, eliminated some of the things that I do, which, you know, takes that stress off. And I've also scaled back quite a bit. You know, I used to just go all out on decorating and doing different things. And I, I just don't do that anymore. Um, you know, I was going to have a holiday party at my house. And I've got so many things going on that I just can't wrap my head around it. So I'm just not going to do it, you know. And I don't think, to me, we put such an emphasis. It is great to be around family and friends and all those kind of things. But I also think it's very important to have those, you know, loving meals, loving conversations all throughout the year so that we don't have to make the one day stressful, you know, and, um, allow, allow it to not look as traditional as it has to, you know, like, for example, there are some people who have a divorced parents and then they're, they have a partner and they have divorced parents. You know, there's all these people. We have to go to grandma's. We have to go to his mom's. We got to go to dad's. We got to, you know, do all these different things and just allowing it to, to shift a little. Like we don't have to do all that. We can do some of it on the week before Christmas. We can do some of it maybe the week after and just kind of allow things to look a little different. Mm-hmm. Take some pressure off. I think that's really good advice. Um, actually, mm, holiday parties. Um, 
Have you ever, like, had a bad experience at, like, a holiday party? Like, if you're enjoying, like, the experience in general, but, like, like, do you, have you ever had to, like, take a moment for yourself at a holiday party or anything like that? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I have, actually. Um, you know, and this was kind of probably around some of my own grief a little bit. And, you know, several years ago, or, you know, it happens occasionally. I always allow myself an out. You know, if I have to go, I'll go. If I, if there's too much energy and too much excitement and just too much happening, I can just allow myself to leave and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've also had, you know, situations come because I'm in recovery myself and, um, you know, the first couple years, you know, things come up at different times dealing with family. You know, situations that are very tense and stressful. Um, and I just have to honor myself. That's the most important thing is where I'm, what I'm feeling, what's happening and make sure that I'm taking care of me. You know, um, all the explanations can come later. <laughs> and, you know, if people are having a problem with what I'm doing. That's their problem. That's not my problem, you know, but I have to take care of myself and I would encourage everybody to really look after themselves because mm -hmm. you know most of the time nobody else is going to mm -hmm. I hate to say that but um do you like is there an increased exposure to like alcohol around this like period of time as well for you um do you have any advice for people who are dealing with that like increased exposure yeah um I think I, for me, no, not necessarily because most of the people that I, um, associate with are not people who, you know, drink, but I know that mm -hmm. that can be a real problem for people. And again, I would suggest to have an out to only stay, you know, in, and if you can't leave, you know, if you're gone home for the holidays and your whole family is, um, celebrating with alcohol and you don't want to, um, make sure you have somebody that you can call right away. Make sure mm -hmm. that there's a safe person that you can talk to and, um, and have a plan. That's, I think the most important thing is to have a plan, have an out and also know that, um, you know, feelings and tension and all that probably will come up. And so how are you going to handle it? Is, is what I would suggest or say. And also you don't have to go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, you don't have to go. So it also just goes back to the previous advice where it's like, you know, you can always have an exit plan and explanations can come later. Like if you feel yourself like, yeah. By ruling out or just getting too much anxiety or, you know, all those things. And, or just even walk into the other room if you have to, or go outside and take a little walk, you know, say a prayer to, um, the God of your understanding or even just the universe. If you don't believe in a, you know, someone to pray to, but there, there's always an out. And so to look for that rather than to look for the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we are at two minutes till time, Michelle. Um, do you have any comments, questions, concerns you'd like to share with the audience uh, before we end off today? Um, you know, I don't think so. I, I guess the, I would just reiterate that, you know, grief, since that's kind of what we're talking about is, is so much bigger or there's so many more subjects around grief, you know, and, and we just sometimes don't allow ourselves, you know, or we don't think we should feel this way or, or, you know, some of those things, but just honoring where we're at and allowing the process to be what it is and not you know, having to force ourselves to do things that we don't want to do. Um, it's just really being kind and gentle and, and loving to yourself first and foremost around the holiday seasons. Cause they can be really hard. Yeah. Thank you so much yeah. for talking with me today, Michelle. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And you have a good holiday. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.